Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, I will go over the basics of lighting an exterior scene. In the previous episode, we were able to furnish an entire interior only with the help of the Chaos Cosmos browser. In this episode, we will explore some of the lighting capabilities of V-Ray. I will show you the sun and sky parameters and give you some helpful information on how to set up your exterior scene. Let's start an interactive render. Before we start exploring the lighting in our scene, I like to overwrite all of the materials with a grey color. Whenever I start testing different lighting scenarios, I always overwrite my materials because that way I won't be distracted by colors or reflections. If you don't want certain materials to be overridden by this option, you can head over to the Material tab. By disabling this option, V-Ray won't apply the overridden material. It's a good rule to exclude materials that contain any type of transparency. That's why I will leave the background plates and windows with their original materials. Let's open the Lighting tab. By default, every SketchUp scene has a sun built in. To change its position, you can use the shadow tray. Another way to access the sun attributes is from the V-Ray Lighting tab. V-Ray has custom orientation parameters, which allow you to achieve maximum precision. You can move the sun horizontally from here and vertically from here. Note that when you increase or decrease the vertical angle, the lighting coming from the sun will be less intense. To compensate, you can change the sun intensity. The intensity multiplier is responsible for the amount of light coming from the sun. Let's say we want a warm sun color to hit our exterior. We can achieve this by changing the sun color. Note that the V-Ray Sun is physically accurate, representing the Sun in real life. This means that the Sun intensity and color are based on the real life properties of the Sun. For example, a Sun with a low vertical angle, as it's in a sunset, will cast a red tint, but if the Sun has a high angle, it will cast a bright yellow tint, as it would at a midday. Now I would like to direct your attention to the shadows that the trees are casting. Notice how sharp they look. If we want to soften them, we can do so by increasing the size multiplier. This is an artistic decision that is based on personal preference. I prefer to have softer shadows so they don't attract too much attention. We can use the size multiplier in another way. Let's say we want to see the sun in our shot. When we increase the size, you can see that the sun disk grows as well. A very good use case can be if there is a sunset and you want to accentuate the big sun over the horizon. Now let's move on to the sky. Here we can change the sky model. Each one of them has its own unique appearance. The pretend model is a legacy sky with vibrant colors, but is not used that often. The CIA clear and overcast simulate different atmospheric conditions. The Hossack sky is very saturated and is generally used for midday scenarios. Finally, the PRG Clear Sky version, which has an enhanced sunrise and sunset, which means that the gradients have a high accuracy that mirrors the properties of our sun in real life. Now let's move our attention to the ground albedo. Think of the albedo color as the part below the horizon. If you want to blend together the color of the horizon and the albedo color, you can do so with the blending angle. To finish this episode, let's find the right position for our sun. A good composition rule when making a daytime exterior is to add shadows to open spaces where there is too much directional light. For example, in the foreground, where our grass is very exposed. Let's move the sun so that we get some interesting shadows. I think this looks much better. Let's turn our materials back on. Note that the lighting and materials go hand in hand. Most of the time when you change your lighting drastically, you will need to fine-tune your materials as well. In this tutorial, we explore the V-Ray Sun and Sky parameters, and with the help of the Material Override option, we were able to find the perfect position for our sun. I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful, and you can try this in your own work. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.